What is up party people? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Devin and for today's video I'm gonna talk about regret. And regret seems like such a strong word to use here. I, I really just want to say things that I could have passed on but that's not as catchy of a title. We're gonna talk about pens that I don't necessarily love. Before we get into it I just want to say that this is my personal preference. Some of these pens you might love and vice versa. There might be pens that I personally think are the best out there and you might not enjoy so I just want to put that out there. I don't want anyone to have any hard feelings if they see some pens listed here that they really enjoy. And if that's the case, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And maybe there's an angle to some of these pens that I haven't tried yet. Maybe there's some tweaks that maybe I could do so that I could better learn to love these pens. But for as of right now, they're just not quite making the cut for me. I'm going to split this video up into two parts. The first part, I'm going to just talk about regular click top sort of pens. And then the last half, I'm going to talk about fountain pens specifically. Let's go ahead and kick it off with the Uni Jetstream. This particular one is one that I picked up from Daiso. I was excited because it's a 0.38 pen and I am all about the finer things in life and that includes pens. It's very difficult for me to use because I don't know when it's actually going to work for me. Some days it does, some days it doesn't, like right now it's sort of working. So in my opinion it's not a very reliable pen. I do want to say that I have a Uni Jetstream 3, I think that's what their multi pens are called. Actually since we're talking about it let me pull it out. So this is the Uni Jetstream 3. I got this in a Tokyo pen shop character kit I believe and it's so cute. It's got Minnie and Mickey. You guys know I'm sort of a Disney freak and if it's on a pen I most likely want it. I've noticed the same thing. This is a 0.5 so I don't know that it's necessarily the tip size that's giving me the issue and there's plenty of ink in here. Some days it writes, some days it doesn't. It looks like today, of course, when I'm filming this video, it's writing just fine, making me look like a crazy person. But let me know if any of you have experienced a similar issue. I don't necessarily wanna say that I regret buying these because it's taught me something about my personal pen preferences. I just probably wouldn't want to pick them up again. The next two pens I want to share I picked up quite a while ago. I think when I was still in high school maybe. It's been that long. I think it came in a set of four with two black ones. This is the Zebra F-301 ballpoint pen. Now initially when I picked up this pen I thought it was just beautiful and it's very sleek design and I liked that it was a fine point pen, I think. Actually, now I'm not entirely sure, but I liked it enough to use up the black ones because I don't have those anymore, but I'm still left over with this red and green. Now these are two colors that I personally just don't use regularly, so that might attribute to why it made this list, but I just, I think overall I'm not a huge fan of ballpoint pens. It's a very nice looking pen. I just don't enjoy using it as much as maybe I did before. Sort of the same thing that I said with the Jetstream. It's not that I hate these pens. I just probably wouldn't pick them up again. I'm a lover, not a fighter. So <laughs> that's that's my stance on these. Next up on the list is the Zebra Serrari in 0.7 and this one is in black. I got this off of Tokyo Pen Shop when they were doing a special on it and I think they were basically closing out the rest of their stock. But I picked this up originally for my husband because I was on the hunt for a good pen for him. He's also very particular but we don't share the same preferences. This was a shot in the dark, so I ended up trying to make it work for me, and it's a very smooth pen, but it's not as bold of an ink as I would like for it to be. I think it's just because of the formula. 
and it's not it's not a bad pen it's just not my favorite okay so let's move into fountain pens the first fountain pen that i regret buying and actually ended up returning is the lamy safari special edition in dark lilac and i know some of you guys are gasping and throwing things at the screen. Maybe you're clicked out of this video already. I don't know, maybe it's not that extreme. I found out about the Dark Lilac after its release. Going backwards and trying to get special editions after they've already had its run is very difficult. <laughs> and I'm sure some of you guys know this, but that was my sort of first experience trying to get something that wasn't really around anymore. So I found it on gold spot pens i believe and i think i bought either an extra fine or a fine it was quite pricey but i convinced myself that it was great and you know i needed it and i bought it and i got it it was not the dark lilac that i was expecting it was very difficult for me to let go because i know that there was such a huge following and appreciation for that color but it just wasn't what I wanted <laughs> and it took me a while. I think I spent a few days mulling over it before I finally pulled the trigger and reached out for a return. The next fountain pen that I want to talk about is a pen that I actually bought when I purchased the Twisby Eco Pastel Pink. I was very much anticipating the launch of the pastel pink and the pastel blue. I bought both. Again, I don't know, maybe I need to go get my eyes checked because the color was not what I was anticipating. It's not what I thought I saw on the promotional material and whatnot. It was a darker blue than what I would say is a pastel blue. I thought it looked more like a periwinkle. Maybe I should look up my Crayola colors before I start throwing out fancy shades of blue there. I'm a huge fan of the Twisby Eco and I anticipate that my collection of them will grow, but the pastel blue just wasn't the right shade of blue for me. And I would love to see them come out with like a lighter version of that. I don't know what they would call it, like light blue. But I would also love to see a Twisby Eco Lavender. I would hop on that so fast. The other pen that I'm actually getting ready to send off to be returned is the Lamy Safari Special Edition in Powder Rose. Now, I was very much looking forward to the launch of the Lamy Safari pastels. I thought about it and narrowed down my selection of getting all three to just the powder rose. I got it and I was gonna do an unboxing and first impressions, but <laughs> the video content just didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to, very much due to the fact that I was underwhelmed with the color and it just the video felt very flat so I don't plan on sharing that here on my channel anymore. I'll share a few clips here of me unboxing it and I just felt like the color was a tad off and that's when I initially unboxed it. I thought it was very pale for a pastel color. It was almost like nude to me and I sat on it for a couple days. I put a poll on Instagram asking if people liked the color and a lot of people did like the color and I started to warm up to it but I think because that was my first glossy safari, like the finish was glossy, it didn't feel as substantial as the matte finish ones which is silly because it is the exact same pen it's just a different finish that was enough for me to say okay it's time to send it back it was almost like I was trying to convince myself to keep it and I don't want to have to do that very much in the way of KonMari I want to have the things that bring me joy anything else those things can be passed on to other people who would very much enjoy having them so eventually I would love to have like just this as my pen case for like my regular pens and then I, I would love to someday invest in the gallon leather 10 
case, 10 pen case holder. I don't know what it's called for my fountain pens. And that would be it for my pen collection. Right now it's not that size and I will do a regular pen collection. I do have a fountain pen collection video if you'd like to see it. I'll link it off in the description box below. The part two to that for all my other pens is coming and if you're looking forward to it, let me know in the comments below. But bringing it back to what this video is about, those are the pens that I thought that I was going to absolutely love and be head over heels for, but they just didn't work out for one reason or another. So I'd love to hear in the comments if any of the pens that I talked about today are pens that you love or perhaps you also feel the same way and just feel kind of so-so about. And let me know if anyone would be interested in doing like a pen swap. These are pens that I've used and you know, they have varying ink levels. I don't know, I'm just brainstorming out loud. Let me know in the comments if that's something that anyone would be interested in and we can, you know, go back and forth on how to set that up. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and feel free to share it with a friend who you think might also enjoy this video. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. I love talking about all things pen and paper, so if that's your jam, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I upload every Thursday evening. So please take care until then and I'll catch you in the next one.